our next session of the day and we're fortunate enough to be joined by KLM and KLM's Asher Lake, uh, who is lead for their automation center of excellence. Uh, it's Asher's job to ensure optimization of the employee experience within KLM using digital capabilities to do so. Um, I think Alex said in his presentation that he doesn't recommend um, people working on holiday. Um, and I know Ash has taken some time out here on his holiday uh, to join us. So, Asher, really appreciate that. Um, thank you for, for joining. And uh, it's good to see you again. We, I think we last spoke when you were joined us in London for our event. Yeah, I think that was the last time, yeah, in person. Yeah. Yeah, Long good time stuff. Ago. So, yeah, how, how's things with you? Obviously, uh, the, the the industry you've been working in has been been affected quite greatly. How 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 are things your end, and are we seeing uh, things pick up now? Is it, are we back on kind of the uptake? Or yeah, it's it's hard. Uh, it's really a kind of a, a fragile uh, restore of, uh, of of operations. Um, we have a lot of things to do to become uh, uh, an even leaner company. So that's still, uh, yeah, kind of an uh, yeah, m exciting. It could be negative, could be positive time, but uh, we're managed. And uh, I must say, the the spirit is up. Uh, the whole blue-hearted uh, vibe is still there. So that's yeah. good. Good stuff. Um, I just wanted to say as well, um, if anyone does have any questions uh, throughout this, um, if you're on the Beyond Business Buzzwords page, uh, do use the chat function and uh, we can put some questions to to Asha. Um, so I think we're going to start around, um, obviously much of the event is around remote work, uh, employee experience and engagement and inv innovative new ways of working adapting. So Asha, just how essential is it for all businesses to be exploring new and innovative ways of working now due to the pandemic? Yeah, I think it's becoming even more um, yeah, needed to, uh, to, to do this because uh, uh, almost everybody's working from home or in another way remotely. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very important that you are ready, uh, both from a technical perspective, but also from kind of this mental perspective and not seeing each other uh, in person. Yeah, it really affects the way you are working. And I think you need to be intentional on what you do to make the best out of it. It has its benefits. Also, um, I, I heard Alex uh, stating it, you could even be more productive in some ways. But I yeah. think uh, it's really good to stay connected. And that's also what I see uh, within our own department at the KLM Digital Studio. But it's also, uh, if I listen to others within KLM, we all feel connected. Uh, and also management is, is, is doing their utmost by communicating well. Uh, so yes, it's not about just about technology that needs to be there, of course, but it's also about uh, your the way of doing your leadership uh, and, and really try to keep connected while everybody is kind of feeling isolated maybe a bit. Of course. And, and with that, were you in a position where your organization was kind of ready to deal with the business extremities that the pandemic pandemic has created um when i say that it's kind of reference to remote working communications you just mentioned about leadership communications collaboration etc and how much was in place and how much kind of more infrastructure did you need to kind of throw at it to ensure um you know the business was still working efficiently yeah i think we were ready um if i look at uh, what we've been doing for the last four or five years uh, as you know, we have a, a, a group of people, our employees, uh, a lot of them are when they are working, they are not at, at the office and when, when they are not working, they're also not at the office. So we already of needed course. to yeah. enable them. Yeah, our flying staff, for example, enabling them with iPads, for example, to do their jobs. But also, if you look at the office workers, uh, most of them were already enabled. And especially if I look at, well, this kind of special place, I always call it the KLM Digital Studio, which is kind of trying to be at the forefront of, 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 of tech and, and, and things. Yeah, it, it, went, it went overnight. We were, the next day, we were all in these Teams sessions or Zoom sessions or uh, Blue Jean sessions, whatever was needed to be connected to each other. So yes, it, it was needed, but I felt we were pretty re uh, ready. And I also felt that our IT department really stepped up to make it all uh, available. Because what you also saw is that a lot of the communications uh, were done in yeah, using Teams maybe, but also our leadership, including our CEO, 
was there with uh, this webcast kind of uh, uh, way to talk to us as, as employees in these exciting times. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we were pretty ready because we started mm -hmm. way back uh, thinking about how can we uh, make our staff, our employees more mobile. Of course. And you, and you mentioned there the digital studios, and that's something that you, you talked a bit about last year when you joined us in London for the live conference. Can you, for, for the audience that don't necessarily know, can you can kind of elaborate what the digital studio is in place to achieve and, and, and things like that? Yeah, of course. I love to talk about it, as you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, the the digital, and digital studios, what we call kind of this corporate incubator, uh, trying to be at the forefront of, of, of technology also. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, enabling the digital transformation within our company. So what we try to do is to really build a bridge with what's needed from the business, what IT is offering and what's maybe out there in the world uh, and try to make that a best match. And what we try to do is to stay connected to the, to the mothership kind of, but really mm -hmm. also try to experiment and try to connect to the world uh, by connecting to universities, to startups, to other companies or smart people uh, try to get them in uh, and try to yeah, experiment with, uh, with yeah, maybe just for us new technologies, uh, but sometimes also in the world uh, things that are really emerging uh, and we don't really have this proper business or value case yet. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. what we try to do. Try to uh, help our employees do what they do best as our tagline is really supporting them in what they do with the co connection to our customers, the passengers uh, or other customers uh, as we also uh, do some maintenance or a lot of maintenance and cargo, uh, but really yeah. try to make a nice connection to the uh, to them uh, by means also of technology. So that's what we try to do at the KLM Digital Studio. And therefore, yeah, we were kind of ready for this kind of uh, extremity. But in, mm -hmm. the, in the same time, we work a lot with external parties. So unfortunately we also were really uh, are brought back to our core uh, yeah. uh, but again also from that perspective we really uh, looked at for example how can we upskill our uh, colleagues and we launched this this track of uh, okay some people were not able to fly but we really made use of their skills to for example mm -hmm. train an, uh, uh, an algorithm uh, because we need to label data and with a lot of people sitting at home that could help mm -hmm. us labeling uh, labeling data and therefore we could build uh, this solution uh, with this kind of intelligent mail automation for all the okay. people that are coming in with questions about voucher requests or refunds. Uh, mm -hmm. Our customer contact centers were overloaded with questions. So we were able to help them again making the best out of what we are uh, uh, what we could do with the people we had at hand so that was also pretty cool to see in this kind of crisis mode we were still able to add value uh, helping our employees do what they do best no nah, nice that's really good and then going back to kind of that em employee infrastructure um you, you said you were pretty ready um for the pandemic you you kind of uh, drew on the fact that you know everyone's working in different areas no one's you, well not everyone but a lot of people are always in different places due to the nature of obviously the industry um has there been kind of more focus or an acceleration in focus on employee infrastructure during the pandemic kind of looking at digital technologies and tools in place within the organization and whether that's evolved over the last four months or whether you're having conversations internally to kind of improve this i guess uh, again you you you're quite ready for that you know entirely remote workforce but has it has it kind of thrown anything else into into the works with with regards to response to the pandemic yeah what i see is that our use of of uh, uh, tools to uh, to enable us to work remotely were really uh, also experimented with so besides mm -hmm. the uh, the usual suspect uh, like uh, like microsoft teams that we are using what i saw is that uh, uh, there was a big adoption uh, of those kind of tools so people who previously maybe were not that comfortable with using this kind of technology yet, yeah, they just stepped in and they start using it. Uh, that's something I really saw. But also, uh, how do you organize with your Scrum team uh, uh, a still an engaging uh, session uh, with all the ceremon mm -hmm. ceremonies you have, which sometimes could take some hours, uh, you sitting behind your desk. And I know, I remember from the start, I was not even, I think the first week of the whole pan pandemic being in lockdown, I didn't even went out for a walk myself because everybody mm -hmm. was out there uh, trying to make the best out of it. But that balance came back, but also the fun. 
And I also must commend my colleagues that are already, already uh, always try to make a bit of fun out of it. So uh, with these kind of sessions, using these online tools, whiteboards, you can all work on uh, putting your posters on it. Really felt that we were all in the office all together. Um, so yeah, I really saw an, uh, an uptake of adopting those kind of tools, experimenting. Some of them failed, some of them were really nice and still used. Uh, and we are talking to each other. Uh, luckily, sometimes we can be in the office. Um, and then we state, okay, but the whole vibe around working together, of course, it's nice to see each other, talk to each other, but um, it's almost the same with all the tools we have and the, really the effort that's put in uh, for, mm -hmm. for some buyer scrum masters or something to really engage uh, the teams on working uh, better. And that's really, if you talk about technology, those kind of things, how can you do the things online, which you normally do in person. Uh, yeah, we, we discovered a lot of things uh, there uh, and both, te again, technology, but also sometimes you need to play a little game uh, or walk around or run around in your own home and get back to, to your screen. I really would uh, advise to, uh, to try in these difficult times to have a little fun as well, because it's important. Of course, yeah, and, and obviously with that, it sounds like employee experience is, is pretty important to, to both yourself and, and to, to obviously KLM. Um, and it's touted, you know, as a modern success for, you know, organizations that have great employee experience. It's kind of outward facing, you know, better customer journeys will be a result of that. Um, how Just how kind of long has it been a part of KLM's work and, and just how important is it to get employee experience spot on? Yeah, it's really nice because, uh, as you know, I love employee experience uh, besides technology, uh, but it's really been picked up also by our HR department. Uh, mm. So just uh, how can we improve uh, uh, the employee experience from our responsibilities, HR? But mm. again, also, uh, I must really commend our, our leadership, uh, also from the digital studio itself, um, every week, um we got an update and it was not just an update like but it was also the the the, the kind of the emotional touch to it uh it all affected us uh and it affects us also uh, to let go people maybe you've been working with for a long time but it wasn't overlooked and it wasn't something uh, uh that was something we did uh, well kind of uh, easy laying people off like that or not uh, extending contracts or whatever uh, no, it's really uh, taken care of. And also from an employee experience perspective, uh, for example, from the digital studio, we had to let go a lot of people, but we are mm. planning as soon as it's possible to have this uh, farewell event uh, in which we invite all those people back uh, to say goodbye in a proper way, because right now it was all online. We had, of course, they were called and connected and we organized something if possible. But that, yeah. for me, really, the human touch in it is, is really important. And that's really yeah. resonating throughout the whole company. Also, on social media, you see leaders, but also colleagues uh, doing things for the community. And that really, mm -hmm. uh, talking about employee experience, is really being proud of the company. I think all KLM, are, all, all KLM employees are proud of the company. But what you see them doing also in, into society with the time they have at hand, helping maybe nursery homes or whatever, uh, mm -hmm getting food for people who are uh, less fortunate uh, in that sense uh, it really creates this bond and it, uh, it it really puts us out there um, as a company who really is, uh, is is trying to take care of of the environment whilst also uh, there are some uh, why do you get funding by the government and so on Th those kind of conversations are also there but i must really say the whole experience of being an employee for this company uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that can make you proud and that really enables this employee experience. It, if you can do some work, I already give the example, we, we organize people to help us label data. I think we have a group of 100 people who really volunteer to support, to be part of something. And I think that's only done if you have a nice employee experience uh, because really people would like to uh, be part of something constructive, something helpful, something meaningful. And I think that's all about employee experience. Yeah, of course. Nice, nice answer. And then, um, kind of looking at remote working, um, what I think we touched on quite a lot in the previous presentation with Alex, things surrounding security and things like that. What are kind of the things that leaders need to consider um, 
you know, what the main things that leaders need to consider when uh, operating a remote workforce? Yeah, I think you need to stay in contact. Uh, for example, um, we have a lot of tools that you can access from any device, uh, uh, being online in the cloud for our, our Office 360 or Microsoft 365 platform, for example. Uh, but that was already in the planning. But having a really lean and easy way to secure your connections using tunneling or uh, other uh, uh, security means, it's important. But also what I also liked is that we regularly are remembered uh about the things maybe also we would that would also be when we were in the office but still be aware about people uh, maybe trying to fish uh, doing fishing uh, activities mm -hmm. be aware on updating your machine regularly by connecting it to the the tunnel regularly uh, so they are really in a nice way and, and uh, encouraging way helping us to to get that done and you really need to have a strong uh, um, a back office to do it so uh, you have yeah. to have the facilities because people are more disconnected from the network and when they come back onto the network yeah it all should be there the security mm -hmm. but it shouldn't hamper your productivity and i really think uh, our it department really found a balance by remembering or enforcing if needed uh, uh, to be on the right level of security and i think that's yeah good because if you don't have your machine it's breaking down and you're at home and maybe uh, two three hours of drive away from home from work yeah that's not so convenient for your productivity so i think you really need to think about are our all our machines also in this way uh, properly secured but in a way that it doesn't hamper your productivity and i think uh yeah that's there and i already stated we we didn't start uh getting a mobile workforce yesterday we started that yeah. already years ago and you see yeah. it bit by bit right now i have an uh, a way of getting connected it's with the uh, with my own uh, phone and using bio uh, bio uh, you call it uh, your fingerprint or your finger well, sensor or your yeah. face yeah it's uh, it's really secure but but easy to do and that's nice Nice. And and just just jumping on that point, you've obviously been doing the remote work thing for some time now. Um, other organizations that are kind of more office bound are just perhaps beginning that journey. But I think even before the pandemic, a lot of organizations were moving to more of a remote workplace any, anyway, uh, in, in the sense that organizations were downsizing kind of office overheads and things like that. But what would you kind of say to an organization um, that, you know, is embarking on the remote work journey? It's starting out, what, what kind of were the major lessons learned um, as KLM have kind of progressed over the, the last few years, obviously it's been a remote workforce for, for years and years and years, but, you know, digital has only been a part of that for, you know, in, in, in a clever and innovative sense for the last say 10 years, what, what, what kind of can companies expect to, to, you know, in terms of hitting bumps in the road and, and, and the types of challenges other than security as discussed, um, you know, what can they expect? If that makes sense. Yeah, I would say I can remember that back in the days when we were talking about our digital workforce and how to enable them, uh, I uh, created kind of this study with, uh, with I think Alex also touched upon it with these personas, uh, do we have a remote worker or a knowledge worker or whatever. I think it's good still to have a look at it, um, to see, okay, what type of workers do we have? Because we didn't we didn't enable all of them in the same way. Uh, so some are perfectly capable to do everything on their phone, maybe. Mm -hmm. Some of them need an iPad, maybe, or another kind of tablet. Some of them really need a heavy duty uh, laptop device for, for uh, the way they are processing data or whatever. Sometimes they just need a virtual machine somewhere in the cloud. So for me, for us, it helped to really segment your, your workforce to say, okay, do we have segments? Maybe you don't, but do we have segments? Uh, and if we do, what's the best fit uh, in a way that it's kind of, of course, still from an economical perspective, it's, it's uh, you need to think about the money because you can diverge a lot, but really what are the main denominators and uh, enable them. And really, if you do that, uh, don't do it from this ivory tower, but be connected to them. Have a look. What are they doing and why do they? Why, why are they doing it? Uh, we talked about a bit. I heard Alex talking about this shadow IT or uh, end user computing. Most of the times, mm -hmm. that's a good sign that you need to do something about your IT environment because people are missing something. So really mm -hmm. trying to, uh, to do something like a study uh, on, okay, which segments do we have? 
and how to enable them in the best possible way. I would advise that. And then maybe the conclusion is, okay, we can do with two sets of, 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 of technology and then everybody is good to go. Maybe that's the case if you are just an office bound worker. I don't know. Mm -hmm. For us, we had this variety of people, people on the platform, people in the air, people in the, in the office, people uh, all, always around the world with, with uh, crappy uh, internet connections. So you need to think about how can we enable them in the best possible way. That's what I would advise and then make your pick um, and, and support them in the best possible way. Nice. Good answer. And then uh, kind of going back to to your work and, and what you do within the digital studio uh, i know you're a big fan of um emerging technologies um things like chatbots and, and things like that what are kind of the most essential um emerging technologies right now to help create a, a, a you know a great digital workplace um for, for particularly for yourself and klm more kind of like the inward um facing transformation yeah, yeah. Then I'm going to talk about my uh, my professional hobby, of course, uh, robotic process automation or intelligent process automation, however, hyper automation, whatever it's called. Uh, mm -hmm. But really, have a look at how can we, if we look inwards, like you stated, uh, how can we optimize? Also, we started, uh, uh, or I started together with some other colleagues, what I call the hashtag Wastebusters initiative, uh, and the initiative is a combination between. Uh, our lean and black belt uh, professionals and the emerging tech professionals. Uh, mm -hmm. I read an article yesterday. Um, are you going to automate as is or are you going to revamp your process and then automate? And what we're trying to create together is to have a look from these process lean Six Sigma whatever specialists they have this nice view on which value streams are out there they also see the potential to remove waste but what i see is that sometimes they lack a bit okay but what emerging tech can we connect to it and i'm an rpa fan uh, really a fanboy about uh, that because i can really explain easily to our business because it's talking about their processes how we can improve that process um, mm -hmm. and we really did that and i think that's something we can really uh, help out and you see that happening i get calls every week from people uh, within the company saying i think i found something uh, uh, which we can uh, uh, can use to improve and that's really momentum for it now because everybody's in the same mindset everybody's okay how can we be better uh, as a company so i really would say uh, not just tech but combine it with your process innovation if you do that in a proper way that would be great besides rpa another uh, thing i really love is uh, this uh, applying machine learning uh, to for example a lot of messages to do uh, natural language processing uh, that's also something how can we help uh, our people to enable or to to be able to um yeah deduct what's uh, important to do and what's maybe less important because we really need to uh, give priority to, to things and an engine and a nicely trained NLP engine can help you to categorize what needs to be done now what can maybe wait a little bit longer and then you are mm -hmm. focusing on the tasks that really are really adding value and besides that uh, we are still looking in how can we for example do some digital twinning uh, that's also technology I really like because you can um, uh, that's what we're aiming for at least is to mimic uh what's what's out there but also maybe to predict uh, uh what's what might happen if we change a few uh parameters but really being able to visualize that so those are some of the emerging tech i would really yeah uh, besides rpa intelligent mail uh, automation mm -hmm. stuff uh, with uh, with the ai capabilities to dive into because i think right now it's momentum to really uh, upskill your uh your 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 people to be able to make the most and the best use of these kind of technologies. Besides that, that's not technology, but also help your people to get there. And we start yes. the Automation Academy uh, this week. Uh, yeah, we started the third class of uh, citizens RPA developers that we are really helping out. And from they, those schools or those classes, also people mm -hmm. say, okay, but now I have a nice idea. I could uh, I could automate. Can I Can I do it myself or can you help us out? So it's really a mix of automating your processes uh, and optimizing yeah. your processes with automation. Try to connect these new tech to it, but also educate your people. Nice. And then kind of just jumping back to, we've touched on it a little bit and uh, it's kind of a common theme coming up today around kind of end user computing. Um, how how, how is that, has that, has that changed? Um, has the strategy or approach with KLM changed on, on kind of those processes? 
Um, to be frank, I don't know. I don't see it change. I just see um, um, we are doing end using computing in a way that it's, it's, it's helping each other out in the best possible yeah. way. So yeah. what I see is that uh, people are more aware that mm -hmm. to be better, they need tech. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not something we do. That's yeah. something people uh, experience and say, yeah, but now we just need to do it. So from the end user computing perspective, uh, people say, okay, I can maybe do something myself. Uh, yeah. I need help to do it. I have an idea. Uh, can you help me out? So what I, what I think, I feel and sense, and that's also why uh, people connecting to us, um, is that they feel a need to jump in. And before they might maybe were a little bit laid back and say, well, we'll see. But now they are more active and proactive stating, okay, uh, how can I contribute? How can people benefit uh, from IT in a better way? And I really see it. I have really easy conversations now about how can we uh, uh, improve these end user computer computing environment um, mm -hmm. from a digital studio perspective, from an IT perspective, but also from a business perspective. So that's what I would say. Uh, there's no strategy for us, for us, I know, to change something but really mm -hmm. how to make the best use of what we have uh, yeah. and how to embark on other stuff that could improve our end user computing uh, uh, skills or environment or capabilities. Nice. And then to, to kind of to wrap things up, um, I always like ending on a pretty open question of kind of any inspired thinking or, or recommendations um, for individuals um so the practitioners that are working remotely i think at the start you mentioned the human side of things so you know getting up and out and about and things like that but just in terms of um their approach um to remote work have you got any kind of things that work well for you as an individual uh, versus kind of the klm approach kind of thing yeah yeah personally what i love is what i, I stated that earlier is uh try to keep the fun in because uh, there are hard times, people are, are uh, experience uh, maybe sad things in their in their environment. So it's good to be connected to stay connected to each other. Uh, just be human. Uh, really be kind to to each other to yeah help each other out. And like when you are in the office, you just see a face and you notice hmm, there might be something there, and you have a coffee maybe, or when uh, during lunch break you walk around. That's harder now. Yeah, of course. Um, and what I really love uh, to do, sometimes it's a personal thing, but show yourself. If you are in this uh, uh, webinar or or in a in a in a in a, in a web conference or in Teams or whatever, uh, sometimes maybe due to uh, a lack of bandwidth, that's that's maybe the only good reason. But show yourself, your face, because then people also uh, we are officially uh, um, we have the, the skills or capabilities to see each other and to also read each other a bit. And that really enables uh, the connection. So that's uh, that's my personal note. And mm. um, uh, on the other hand, I would like to state also, yeah, just be skilled uh, or be, uh, skill yourself in using those kind of tools. Select one, use one, and uh, and collaborate uh, in a way that yeah, using Google Docs or using Microsoft or OneDrive or whatever. But really try to collaborate and connect to each other. A fun thing that uh, my team did as well, we have at three o'clock, we have this coffee moment, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. we all log in. It's kind of uh, uh, not mandatory, but you can log in. And the only thing, the only rule is we don't talk about work. So that's also nice. a way to check in. Uh, yeah. uh, and it's voluntary, but you can check in, you have a chat, uh, sometimes it takes longer than 15 minutes, but those kind of things I would really, uh, uh, yeah advice because it's fun it keeps you connected also on the human level and if you are connected on a human level you have better uh, uh, better better results on a professional level that would be my uh, my two cents no that sound advice I, I like that i think uh it always comes back to that that human element doesn't it we can talk about technology and, and infrastructure you know and all the time but at the end of the day you know with the mechanical parts of the business so it's important to focus on that and ensure you know happiness levels uh, are, are optimal it's, you know employee experience isn't all about the digital tools and technology it's also about um how, how we're feeling using those and how we're kind of working together uh during this time so nice advice and um 
a really good answers to to all the questions. Again, I think we've we've covered a lot there, uh, and uh, really do appreciate you you joining us, Asha. Um, as mentioned, I know you've taken time out of your uh, your holiday, your annual leave to to join us this morning. Um, so that's very much uh, appreciated, and uh, it's great to great not see you again, but to hear from you again and, and kind of pick your brain on on a few things. It's been uh, it's been highly informative and, and and a great little session there. Thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Always happy to share. Thanks. And hopefully, hopefully we'll see you uh, in person in 2021. If uh, things are on the up and we're, we're back, uh, you know, able to operate conferences, we're, we're over, we should be over in Amsterdam uh, later next year, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, well, time will tell, but certainly be in touch and hopefully have you on a stage of ours soon. It would be great. Thank you for this. Enjoy. Thanks, Asher. Yeah, enjoy right. the rest of your Thank you.